Lexus GS has recently received an update, introducing an all-new SUV built from the ground up. It's clear that the company has reconsidered its long-standing approach to building vehicles, moving away from large, naturally aspirated V8 engines in favor of complex turbocharged engines that are faster and more fuel-efficient than their predecessors. In the future, we'll definitely release a video on how these changes have impacted the reliability of the GX. But for now, it's worth asking, what have we lost? Or maybe better to say, what has been taken from us? This is the Long Last Channel, and let's take a ride. The GX460 is truly a unique SUV in its own way, and its strengths may seem like drawbacks to some. It all depends on what you prefer more, technology and modern design, or slightly outdated but time-tested solutions. Let's be honest, while the interior design is well-made, it's frankly outdated and more reminiscent of a vehicle from the 2010s, which in essence it is. Nevertheless, despite lacking all those features that make its competitors look and drive better, the GX continued to have steady demand in the car market up until 2023. This raises the question, what has been driving buyers to choose Lexus until recently? Let's figure it out. When talking about the engines for the second generation Lexus GX460, the complete lack of options immediately stands out. For the entire 13 years of production, only one engine was offered the 4.6-liter V8 with the code 1URFE. For the Chinese market, Lexus also offered V6 engines, but due to their limited availability, we won't be discussing them. Coming back to the V8, before we talk about its reliability, it's important to note that the 1URFE has a very similar counterpart, the 1URFSE, and they are often confused. While they may look alike and were sometimes installed in the same vehicles, their designs are different. The letter S indicates the presence of a more advanced direct injection technology, whereas the standard 1URFE used in the Lexus GX460 employs port fuel injection. This, in turn, spares the engine from the issue of carbon buildup. In 2006, when this engine was introduced, Toyota's reputation as a brand producing the most reliable vehicles was unquestionable. However, the new engine raised some concerns, as Toyota offered a fully aluminum engine design which at the time seemed like a somewhat unpopular decision. Although aluminum engines were already widespread and found in many vehicles, American consumers were accustomed to seeing cast iron blocks in their V8 engines. So the new motor was met with some caution. Nevertheless, it must be acknowledged that these concerns were unfounded. The aluminum block proved capable of handling the stresses, but this applies to SUVs whose owners regularly maintained a clean engine cooling radiator, as this is a critical factor. It often happened that the radiator became clogged with dirt, and the aluminum engine didn't receive adequate cooling. When overheating occurred, the cylinder head would lose its symmetry, leading to a blown head gasket. A telltale sign that you've already caused irreversible damage to the engine is constant overheating, regardless of speed. Repairs in such cases aren't cheap. However, the cylinder block is typically not subject to warping, but the cylinder will need to be milled. Owners who change the oil on time and clean the radiator at least once a year generally don't encounter this issue. The cylinders themselves are not prone to scoring and show good wear resistance even after high mileage. Nevertheless, it's not a bad idea to take care of them, as constant city driving can cause the oil control rings to stick, leading to increased oil consumption. As we mentioned earlier, the use of port fuel injection, where the fuel mixture is delivered before the combustion chamber, prevents carbon buildup on the valves, which has a positive effect on engine longevity. Lexus recommends using fuel with an octane rating of at least 91. However, this recommendation is more about maximizing performance, and there's no need to worry about engine failure from using a lower octane rating. Just take a look at the owner's manual for the Toyota Tundra, which has the same engine, where the manufacturer allows the use of 87 octane fuel without issue. That being said, you shouldn't disregard fuel quality, and it's better to avoid filling up at unknown gas stations. Trying to save money could result in problems with the EGR system and the catalytic converter. 
One URFE engine doesn't include modern technologies like cylinder deactivation, and perhaps that's for the best. There's simply nothing to break. Unlike the 5.3-liter engines in Chevrolet vehicles, where lifter issues sometimes occur, you won't find such problems in the GX460. On the other hand, the lack of modern technology does impact fuel efficiency. You can't expect low fuel consumption. Under ideal conditions on the highway, at speeds up to 60 miles an hour, you might achieve 25 miles per gallon, but real-world figures are much more modest. In winter city driving, fuel consumption can reach 10 miles per gallon, around 15 in good weather, and about 21 miles per gallon on the highway at 65 miles an hour. One of the most common issues with the GX460 is coolant leakage due to the loss of seal integrity in the water pump which typically occurs around 70,000 miles. Over time, the pump begins to leak coolant, potentially leading to engine overheating if it's not replaced in time. However, this issue doesn't pose a serious threat if you regularly check the coolant level. If you notice ongoing coolant consumption, it's a sign to take your vehicle to the service center. Coolant leakage is easy to spot, but predicting a fuel pump failure is much harder. Unfortunately, 2018 and 2019 models were found to have issues with the low-pressure fuel pump located in the gas tank. This malfunction can lead to the engine suddenly stalling while driving, potentially creating a dangerous situation on the road. Toyota has addressed the problem by launching a recall campaign, replacing the faulty pump with an improved version. Therefore, if you're considering purchasing a GX460 from these years, be sure to check that the previous owner has already had this part replaced. Up until around 200,000 miles, you generally don't need to worry about the timing chains. They tend to last a long time. However, after 250,000 miles, it's recommended to replace the chains and at the same time check the condition of the camshaft phaser and hydraulic tensioners. Yet, the key factor in the trouble-free operation of this engine lies in its maintenance, and there's an interesting point worth discussing. Every GX460 owner knows that the manufacturer recommends using the low-viscosity Toyota Genuine Motor Oil with a 0W20 rating. If you check the official owner's manual, you'll find the clear statement, 0W20 is the best choice for good fuel economy and good starting in cold weather. If SAE 0W20 is not available, 5W20 oil may be used. However, it must be replaced with SAE 0W20 at the next oil change. This all sounds quite strict, doesn't it? Almost as if disobeying and using 5W30 oil would inevitably cause your engine to explode. But what if we're not concerned about maximizing fuel economy or performance, and instead prioritize extending the engine's lifespan? Surprisingly, Toyota itself provides the answer. We just need to look at the recommendations Lexus offers in markets where driving conditions are harsher and environmental standards are not as strict as in North America or Europe. Here's the official Lexus GX460 owner's manual for Russia. And what do we see? Acknowledging the tough conditions in this region, Lexus allows the use of 5W20, 5W30, and even 10W30 oils without any restrictions. So, if you frequently tow a trailer, live in mountainous or extremely hot areas, it might make sense to switch to a higher viscosity oil. As for oil change intervals, this also depends on the strain your engine is subjected to. The manufacturer recommends changing the oil every 10,000 miles for regular driving and every 5,000 miles under heavy loads. Of course, 10,000 miles is quite a long interval, and it's better to cut that distance in half to help preserve the engine's longevity as much as possible. In conclusion, it's worth noting that despite a few drawbacks, the 1URFE can confidently be called exemplary. There are no complex cylinder deactivation systems, and fuel efficiency is not its strong suit, nor will its acceleration likely impress you. The value of this engine lies in entirely different parameters. It's appreciated for its reliable design and durability, the ability to comfortably embark on long journeys without worrying that something might go wrong. The approximate lifespan of this engine is around 400,000 miles, but with proper care, it can last even longer, solidifying its reputation as one of the most durable units in its class. The GX460 was equipped with only one transmission, marked as A760F, 
Initially, it was designed for use in rear-wheel drive Lexus sedans as a more fuel-efficient alternative to the existing transmissions. However, engineers later decided that its design was robust enough to be installed in heavier all-wheel drive vehicles from the same company. This decision isn't surprising, given that it is structurally related to the 5-speed A750, which had proven itself as the workhorse of Toyota off-roaders, produced in the early 2000s. This connection certainly benefited the A760, but there are some nuances worth mentioning. After its introduction, the transmission performed very well, especially for Toyota vehicles. However, for Lexus, it was tuned to a more aggressive driving style. When the accelerator is pressed hard or the wheels slip excessively, the friction plates wear out quickly, contaminating the transmission fluid. Friction dust clogs the valve body and solenoids, triggering a chain reaction of decreasing oil pressure. Continued operation under these conditions leads to the burning of friction plates in various clutch packs and eventually wears out the oil pump itself. If the problem is caught early, you can limit repairs to just replacing the burned friction plates. Typically, the first to fail is the B1 friction plate kit and the steel discs, followed by the C3 pack, which is responsible for reverse gear. The latter is especially delicate and cannot handle high loads, so pulling a stuck friend out of the snow by attaching a tow rope to the front of your vehicle is strongly discouraged. Key signs of a damaged transmission include dark fluid with a burnt smell, metal shavings in the pan, and plastic rings turning brown. However, if you warm up the transmission before driving and minimize hard accelerations, this unit can demonstrate phenomenal reliability, even when paired with large engines. Internal components such as the drums, direct clutch hub, and bushings are very durable. Notably, even if the transmission overheats, these components often do not warp and remain functional. The optimal oil change interval is every 50,000 miles. While this process is labor-intensive, it is essential, as regular oil changes are key to the long life of the transmission, which has an estimated lifespan of around 300,000 miles. Now we've come to perhaps the most common issue GX460 owners face, and that is the Kinetic Dynamic Suspension System. This system combines active stabilizers with hydraulic cylinders. The concept is simple. By transferring fluid between the cylinders, the SUV can control suspension travel off-road, while on regular loads, it stiffens the suspension, improving handling and stability in corners. The main symptom of KDSS failure is the car leaning or tilting to one side, where one side of the vehicle becomes noticeably higher than the other. This problem is much more common in vehicles operated in harsh winter conditions. The issue arises because the KDSS unit's housing is highly prone to corrosion. Dirt and moisture can accelerate corrosion and deform the unit, resulting in a loss of system integrity and fluid leakage. Many owners find themselves needing to visit the service center even before reaching 50,000 miles. To prevent this issue, it's important to regularly clean the KDSS unit from any dirt or apply a special anti-corrosion coating. Additionally, in early generations, the stabilizer bushings were not particularly reliable. Some owners linked their unreliability to the KDSS system, and they sometimes needed to be replaced after just 20,000 miles. Aside from this, the GX suspension demonstrates exemplary reliability. Bushings, control arms, ball joints, and other components usually don't require attention until after 120,000 miles. The GX460 can truly be considered a phenomenon of our time. In an era where automakers change generations every five years, it's hard to believe that a vehicle introduced in 2009 was produced until 2023. By retaining its time-tested V8 engines and overall solid construction, these cars were chosen by people who value peace of mind and confidence in their vehicle above all else. Despite some issues, the overall reliability of the Lexus GX460 should be rated well above average. Yes, the KDSS system and some components raise concerns, but Lexus tends to forgive mistakes and provides early warnings of potential problems. Otherwise, the key components, such as the engine and transmission, are exemplary in terms of reliability and won't let you down.